right. Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, and double honors to the apostles and elders who taught me this truth, starting with the man of Great Millstone, better known as GMS, and peace and salutations to the elect scattered across the four corners of the earth. And shalom to you, Akium, out there that is preaching this word with all sincerity and truth, risking your lives and freedom to do so. All right, more so now than ever, especially in these times. And um, just wanted to do a quick land back off the beloved uh, elder. Um, <clears throat> I think he's up in uh, New York or Connecticut, and um, I apologize, elder, if I forget. But um, as you see on the screen, um, the elder ended up making a uh, video based off the title being uh, the Holy Scriptures have to be broken down the right way. And uh, that sparked me to do a quick land back off of there um, because the apostles and the elders always tells us that uh, roughly paraphrasing, no matter how much you grow within this ministry and pushing this word, you always have one need to teach you again to start with the basics and you cannot get you cannot grow within this truth if you do not have the basic foundations, the basic understanding. OK, and <clears throat> uh, as I always say, and uh, a lot of my videos that I uh, sincerely put out to help do my part in this uh, ministry is in order for you to understand the uh, mystery of the scriptures, you have to understand the history. All right. Now. Um, there's been a recent video that has surfaced on YouTube for my account, better known as uh, HOI, which goes by the name of House of Israel. And uh, basically you had um, one of the uh, elders from that camp went into the Romans 11 chapter breakdown. But uh, basically one of the elders from the Vegas GMS camp uh, picked up on a video and basically uh, made a video showing that the elder from that camp was going off, which indeed he was. And uh, basically, if you are new to this truth, then you're just getting your feet wet within the scriptures. You're, you're just starting to learn little bit by little bit as you, you know, watch the videos. If you've uh, stumbled across Romans the 11 chapter, you'll know that that chapter is dealing with the wild olive, uh, the wild wild olive tree. OK, now. The wild olive tree and the branches of the tree, um, the person in the HOI camp is alluding to both Israel and the Gentiles, which are, which will be considered these other uh, heathen nations uh, based off their interpretation. But when you understand the scriptures, you understand that that's not what it's talking about. It's not talking about these other heathen nations because you have to understand that one the heavenly father never done away with all 12 tribes of israel and secondly the heathen nations cannot be grafted in when they were never given the covenant from you know uh to begin with but nevertheless that's not what this uh lesson uh that i'm going into the reason why I want to land back off the beloved elders uh, video here is because it is uh, 144 percent truth. The Holy Scriptures have to be broken down the right way. Now, the Heavenly Father through his son. All right. And through the prophets. All right. Um, we have been given directions on how the scriptures are meant to be broken down. OK, but the first scripture I want to go into is Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 and it says study to show thyself approved unto the most high a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth now what does that mean that means the study in part is the study can consist of uh, well first and foremost like the Eld, uh, elder malcolm from chicago always says that if you're going to study any the first book that you should be reading is the holy scriptures you should not be tapping into any other book of history or source information until you have a full understanding of the scriptures and i can concur on that because 
when I first got started and I've only been in this thing for um, just two years. So I'm not pumping myself up to be anything. I'm still new. I'm still learning. All right. Uh, but the talent that the Heavenly Father through his son has given me to understand is what I'm pushing out. Um, but at the same time, uh, I can relate to that because when I first got started, um, I started getting all I, I started, you know, when it bought out, when it bought a you know a holy Bible, when it bought purchased the Apocrypha. And then I purchased uh, my first uh, book outside the scriptures was um, from Babylon to Timbuktu. And then I recently uh, after that, about a month or two later, I think it was I purchased uh, William Beastles. Uh, the Roman Empire is Esau Edom. All right. And then I ended up purchasing um, Zondervan Bibles uh, Compact Dictionary. All right. Uh, the rest of, uh, you know, books and stuff like um, <clears throat> the third, the, uh, the 13th tribe by uh, I forgot the 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 author's name, but um, I ended up getting that on the PDF file and so forth. But nevertheless, Salakia for rambling on. Um, when you start to go outside the scriptures and you start to study, what what tends to happen is you'll pick up on something and then it's easily for you to be influenced based off what that author um, brings out if you're not well diverse within the scriptures, if you don't have that understanding. So <clears throat> giving an example, if any of you guys have the uh, the book from Babylon to Timbuktu out there, you will know that in that book, the author goes into uh, the the discovery of the so-called white man being from the line of Japheth, uh, where when we know Esau Edom comes from the line of uh, uh, Salakia, the white the so-called white man comes from the line of Esau Edom and not Japheth. All right. But we know that if if you were, let's say, a person that's coming in, it's your first time, you get excited, you start purchasing all these books and so forth, trying to align them with the scriptures. If you haven't read the scriptures and gotten the proper breakdown, teachings and understanding, it's easy for you to go off because you have not well equipped yourself with the basic fundamentals to understand in the scriptures. You have not studied. OK, the, the first study um, matter of fact, let's get a precept. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 34. All right. Isaiah 34 and 16, it says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate for my mouth. It hath commanded and his spirit. It had gathered them. So what book should we sh uh, should we be seeking out of? That's the Holy Scriptures. So there's no other book. That's going to give you the prophetic uh, breakdowns and prophecies that's to come other than the scriptures. You can go outside the Bible all freaking day and go into this book, the book of the Mormon, the book of the dead and everything. Not one of them are going to come close or match up to the Holy Bible. That's first and foremost. So um, second Timothy two and 15, once again, study to show thyself approved. OK, you have to show yourself approved, well versed within the scriptures to be able to go out and teach the word. Right. But that also comes with the instruction. Um, if we get the book, same book, uh, Isaiah chapter 28, verse nine, it says, whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So if you're still on the breast and you're getting the milk, which is the basic understanding and what do I mean by basic understanding? Who are the 12 tribes of Israel pertaining to the uh, curses today? OK, uh, is the Lord dealing with everyone or is he only dealing with uh, Israel? OK, what was the ov overall commandment uh, for Israel to follow? Right. Basic scriptures like that. OK, who is the end of the world and the beginning of it that follow it? OK, that's what it means by uh, understanding the milk of the scriptures. OK, but if you're in to the point where you're trying to go over and beyond that and you're trying to get the meat okay you're going to vomit it's going to be too much for me because you're going to find yourself trying to break down 
a particular chapter, but you haven't even gotten the basic foundations and fundamentals. And right. And that's why it's very important to understand. And this is why, you know, the elder made this video that the Holy Scriptures have to be broken down the right way. So, you know, um, back in Isaiah, the 28th chapter, it says, verse 10, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. And this is how we teach. We teach according to what the scripture says. OK, in order for you to have an understanding, first, you have to have the fear of the Lord and the Lord has to be dealing with you. Number one, you have to be guided by the Holy Spirit, because even if you use precept upon precept and I remember the beloved brother, uh, Elder Monoctazak, uh, Monoctazak down in um, South Carolina camp, he says this all the time in his videos that, you know, watch out for the precept trap brothers. All right. <laughs> he calls them the precept trap brothers because, you know, it's not all it's not always about the precepts It's mainly about the Holy Spirit. You can't do anything without the Holy Spirit and the beloved Apostle Gabar went into that he done a video off that a few a uh, few days ago said that the holy spirit is the engine that drives this ministry and that's true all right but watch this the heavenly father is telling telling us right here isaiah 28 and 10 for precept must be upon precept precept upon precept line upon line line upon line here a little and there a little verse 11 for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people right now if we drop down to verse 13 it says, but the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Because in the book of Psalms, David prayed to the heavenly father, uh, let their table be made a snare upon. All right. Because you have it. You have people. You have these uh, Israelites, you know, that have their own camps and stuff that are not on one accord. They're not preaching the same doctrine. All right. So even when, you know, the apostles and uh, elders from Great Millstone, who are the true men of the Lord, no matter how many times they go out here on the highways and byways and they do sit down lessons, like the elder Monoctazak uh, said in um, from uh, South Carolina camp, if you don't get the breakdowns, you're through. It's as plain and simple. That's it for you. If you can't get it, that's it. All right. You have a stumbling block placed on you. The Heavenly Father doesn't want you to get it. OK, so even if you try to read the scriptures using a precept on precept, if the Holy Spirit is not dealing with you to get the, the concept of the scriptures, the basic uh, uh, understanding, uh, then it's no hope for you. It's no hope for you. We can sit here and go through so many breakdowns do so many videos but at the end of the day if it's still not clicking to you it is what it is we're gonna keep moving forward all right so that brings me to going back to the basics beginning with the milk right this is first peter uh chapter two verse one it says wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. OK, so that's what it means to study, to show yourself approved. But you have to first sincerely desire the milk, meaning what? Desire the basic fundamentals. OK, desire the basic foundations. You have to have a foundation in order to stand tall so that you can grow in the faith. Because if you don't, if you're not, and I'm, I'm speaking to the men when I say this, because the, the heavenly father through his son is only dealing with the men. All right. The scriptures tells you that a woman, um, that when the apostle Paul was on the scene, he said, I suffer not a woman to teach, nor you suffer 30 over the man. All right. So if you're a woman, you shouldn't be teaching other men. All right. Now you can teach other women how to be in full, uh, subjectiveness to their husbands, how to love their husbands and how to, you know, uh, nurture and educate the children. All right. But as far as teaching men in the, in the ministry, that's not your place. All right. And if you have a problem with that, you take that up with the heavenly father and the son. 
Okay, I'm dealing with the men. So if you if you a man and you came in this truth and you're sincerely trying to do the work and everything, make sure that you have the basic understanding. And, and if you don't. All right. You should not be doing anything unless you have an answer for it. And I'm going to get a scripture to back that up because you should always be seeking counsel. All right. And also pray on it. OK, if you don't have if what you're bringing out is not aligned to the teachers who you're um, under. All right. You need to check yourself, man. OK, because the scripture says. And I think in the book of Matthew, Yahweh Shah said that, you know, uh, every idle word. OK, you're going to roughly paraphrase and you're going to be uh, judged on every idle word. So you don't want to make that mistake going out here and teaching the wrong thing. You don't want to break down the scriptures wrong and tell your uh, your fellow uh, Israelite about, you know, their salvation. All right. So we again, we must be as newborn babes desire desiring the sincere milk of the word. You have to come in this thing humbly. All right. One of my favorite scriptures is Ecclesiastes. I want to get that. Verse five, uh, Salakia. Ecclesiastes chapter five, verse one, keep thy foot when thou goest into the house of the most high. Now, the scripture says where there are two or more of my name, I am in the midst of thee, meaning that's the church. All right. The heavenly father is not uh, dwelling with temples made with hands. That's why we tell you to get away from these damn church houses because they nothing but whole houses. You understand? So when you see the apostles and elders out there that are out there on the highways and byways doing the work. All right. Um, that's the house of the Lord. All right. And it says, and be more ready to hear than to get sacrifice of fools for they consider not that they do evil. So what's the evil S laughing, scoffing, talking about some, all oh, that ain't right. It's this John the Baptist wasn't in the truth. Cornelius wasn't an Israelite. He was a, a so-called Edomite, which is what the elder, um, was going into on this video. That's why he made this video saying the Holy Scriptures have to be broken down the right way. Because you got a lot of cats out there that, is, are, that are just blindsided and they're doing their own damn thing. All right? They're just going off doing their own thing. So we're we not supposed to be doing that. Okay? Verse 2, it says, Be not rash with thy mouth and let not thy heart, meaning your mind, be haste, hasty to utter anything before the Most High. For the most high is in heaven and thou upon the earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. So when you come, when we come in the midst of the elders, whether you be at home on the couch sitting in, you know, uh, watching their videos, don't jump on the fucking comment board saying any old thing and what you want to say. You there to listen. The heavenly father has set up the apostles and elders and teachers on down to give the word to wake up the house of Israel, starting with the elect. So all that other shit need to get cut out. And that's why you see in these last days, the most high is making an example. All right. He's sifting the house of Israel. You can get that in the book of Amos. But nevertheless, let's get back. All right. And I'm just moving through the spirit, just taking my time because this this needs to be said. All right. Because you got so many brothers out there that, you know. They don't know what they, they don't know what they're talking about. Hebrews 5 and 12, it says, For when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of the Most High. What are the oracles? The law, statutes, and commandments, and everything else that is attained within these holy scriptures. And are become such as have need of milk. So it's all about the basic fundamentals, the basic foundations. And not of strong meat. What's the meat? You try to be deep and you sitting up here. You can't you going into Romans, the 11th chapter, but you can't even break it down all the way. You got folks out there that still believe in uh, the whole Christianity doctrine that there's a universal uh, salvation for everybody who believes on so-called Jesus Christ. And all they got to do is believe on the blood and that we're already under the second covenant and that the law, statutes, commandments were done away with. All right. That's that false doctrine bullshit, man. And that's why you see the apostles and elders are making these uh, videos 
and they're coming out here sounding repetitive. But you know what? The Heavenly Father said what? Let's get that real quick. Let's get, um, what do I want? Jeremiah, what is it, 4? And, uh, yeah, 4 and 22, it says, For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are satish children, meaning they are fools. And they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. And that's a lot of, you know, brothers who are considered elders and captains and bishops in camps. And they still going off, not can't even break down a basic uh, uh, what I like to call a basic breakdown. Right. Let's go back. It's all about the milk, man. Hebrews 5 and 12. Let me read that again for when for the time ye ought to be teachers. So when you're set and you've been built up. All right. And you are becoming a teacher, which you should. OK, if you a man, you should be out here teaching this word. Ye have need that one teach you again. Which be the first principles of the oracle of the most high and, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. So that's why we always have to go back to the basis. We have to be diligent. Study to show thyself approved. All right. Uh, jump down here. Uh, Sirach chapter three, verse 21. It says, seek not out things that are too hard for thee. Neither search the things that are above thy strength. So whatever talent you have been given, because listen, every brother has not been blessed with the talent to prophesy. OK, you might been you might be good at history. So, you know how to link up history with the scriptures. If that's your lot, play that role. Do it to the best of your ability. Perfect it. You have brothers out here who may not be good at history, but they know precepts like it ain't nothing. If that's your lot, play that lot very well to the best of your ability. You have brothers out here that don't know the deep breakdowns, but they know the basic foundations of the scriptures. Stick to your lot and do that. If you only know the basic foundations like who are the 12 tribes? OK, um, who is Esau Edom? All right. Uh, who is the end of the world and the beginning of it that followed? OK, what do the Lord require of all of Israel? Deuteronomy, the 12th chapter. OK, what are the curses? Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, start at verse 15 all the way down to 68. All right. See, everybody has a part to play in this ministry, but you have to find what your lot is that the heavenly father through his son has blessed you with. And it's up to you to work out, to bring that to fruition and to be the best at whatever the most high has blessed you with. That goes back to that talent. All right. Uh, so rock 39 and one, it says, but he that giveth his mind to the law of the most high and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. Now, in order to get a understanding of this, we all should be occupied in, in prophecies. But the issue is the prophecies are being broken down incorrectly. Now, let's get the book of um, real quick. Let's get the book of. Um, uh, where are we? Proverbs, the first chapter, starting at verse six. It says to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Verse seven, this is how you understand them. The fear of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now, here it is. This brother uh, from the HOI camp who broke down Romans, uh, the 11th chapter incorrectly, basically, I don't know how long the brother has been in the uh has been doing a work, but it's safe to say that when you look at all these other camps, mainly Great Millstone, GMS, they have already gone in to various breakdowns, proving through the scriptures, not based on their own thoughts and opinions, but what the scripture says that Cornelius was an Israelite. 
But here it is. You have brothers in their pride. They are so, excuse my French, they are so fucking prideful that they have the audacity to still go out here and teach another fucking false doctrine that is throwing Israel off. Because once again, like I said, when you understand, when you truly understand the scriptures, the heavenly father is not dealing with all nations. And he tells you that in the book of Psalms, the 47 chapter, roughly starting around verses 19 to 20, he show up his uh, statues unto Jacob. All right. His laws unto Israel, roughly paraphrasing, he had not dealt so with any other nation. All right. Amos, the third chapter. Only you, only uh, out of the families of the whole entire earth, roughly paraphrasing, have I known. So the Heavenly Father is not dealing with the other heathen nations to where they can be grafted back in. So in order to, to desire the sincere milk, you have to have the fear of the Lord. And it's evident that these guys don't have the fear of the Lord. Because if they did, they will be making sure that their doctrine is correct. They will be seeking counsel. Let's grab that real quick. Let's get some precepts off that. Uh, I think I spelled it wrong. Seek counsel. Proverbs 11 and 14, it says, where no counsel is, the people fall. But in a multitude of counselors, there is safety, right? So that means, in other words, remember, we're subject to vanity within the flesh. So it's easy for you to go off. All right. Uh, Proverbs three and five says, trust in the Lord uh, with all thy heart and lean not into thy own understanding. That's why you seek counsel first before you do anything and also pray. Elder um, Yashawamba from the Dallas camp says all the time, uh, his videos in times past that um, before you put up a video, all right, pray on it and also seek to your elders, have them to look over the video, make sure that you're bringing out the right information. So at the end of the day, you have to be very careful what you're putting out to Israel, man. All right. Um, let's see here. Let's grab another one. Here's a good one. Sirach 32 and 19. It says, do nothing without advice. And when thou hast once done, repent not. So before you go out and start uttering your mouth and speaking, make sure you have seek, uh, seek counsel. You dig what I'm saying? Make sure you get counsel before you do something. That's having fear in the Lord. Making sure, always having in the back of your mind, man, what can, all right, what can I do to please the Lord? Did I do this right? Did I do that right? I know for me, a lot of times now, I'm to the point where, you know, if, if, if I get asked something from a friend or whatever, I don't even utter nothing out of my own vain opinion. I, I go straight to the scriptures. Let me see what the Heavenly Father through His Son said. Let me try to look that up in the scriptures to see how to handle that situation. Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord uh, with all thy heart and lean not into thy own understanding. Because let me get this. That's the spirit. Let's get um, Jeremiah 17. And why should we and, and why sh should you not lean into your own understanding? Jeremiah 17 and 9, it says the heart, meaning your mind is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So when you out here calling shots or whatever and you haven't seen counsel through the man of the lord starting with the prophets the apostles and elders on down you sure as hell gonna make a mistake and you're gonna say the wrong shit so that's why it goes back it goes without saying man first peter all right let's get that again all right first peter Chapter two, verse two, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. That's what it's about, man. It's about being sincere and humbling yourself. You know, because 
that's why the uh the elders of pop the apostles and the elders bishops and teachers on down that's why they having to be repetitive and make these videos the holy scriptures have to be broken down the right way isaiah 28 9 and 10 okay precept must be upon precept but again the holy spirit has to be dealing with you and like we read in proverbs the first chapter the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom all wisdom and look at this idiot over here what what why 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 would you do that what's the what's the fucking point and and you know, see man this place is through all that for uh, this man is in a car park revving his engine cars all around where the hell you gonna go you ain't got no room see what i mean man for nothing but nevertheless salakia forget sidetrack it's all about having the sincere milk when doing the work of the heavenly father and making sure and that's another thing man you don't want to sit up here and go out and and, and, and when you're doing the work you want to make sure that you got everything in order you want to make sure that you know okay am i bringing this out right am i breaking this this down right that's what the videos are up there for man go back Second, uh, um, Second Timothy two and fifteen. Study to show that self approved. So you know, um, that's pretty much my two cents. What I wanted to add in. I think the point has been made. I don't really have much else to say on that. But you know, to us brothers, and I, you know, first and foremost to myself, you know, we have to be uh, very careful and our dealings when it comes to this truth all right be diligent but also be wise and seek counsel before you just utter anything out of your lips all right because you can't oh that's the spirit let's uh let's bring out this scripture sirach chapter five we'll end it on there um let's see here one moment um Yep. Actually, that's a, that's man. It's a lot of meat in here. Um, we'll start at ten. This is Sirach chapter five, verse ten. It says, "Be steadfast in thy understanding, and let thy word be the same." Okay, so yo, so you should never be switching up. Your word should remain the same, right? But you have a lot of people that are just everywhere. They're just everywhere. Their their whole doctrine. Is 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 just holes, all right? They whole doctrine is just everywhere. And what does the scripture say? Roughly paraphrasing, a double a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. So when you're saying one thing one minute and then you turn around and say something uh, else the next minute, you you through you going off. You have no idea what's going on. Verse eleven: Be swift to hear and let thy life be sincere and with patience give answer. But here's the point, verse 12. If thou hast understanding, if, key word, if, if thou hast understanding, answer thy neighbor. If not, lay thy hand upon thy mouth. So that goes pretty much with anything. If you have understanding on the situation, give the answer. If you don't, shut the hell up. And that goes back to this scripture here I brought out earlier, Ecclesiastes chapter five, verse one, keep thy foot when thou goest in the house of the most high and be more ready to hear than to give sacrifice of fools for they consider not that they do evil. Why? Because we read it in Proverbs chapter one, verse seven, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So if you don't know what the hell you're talking about, if you ain't got the understanding, shut up. Don't be so quick to open your mouth in the house of the Lord. Be more ready to hear. So, you know, the point has been made, man. Lord willing, you guys will edify. Shalom.